Hey, this is going to be a tour of my indoor endless pool. It's a budget pool done for less than £8,000. Um, you can see here, you know, in its uh, covered state. I'm going to pan around and show you all the different bits and pieces and uh, what you'd need to do if you want to set up something similar. So first thing, you really need a good power off switch for the, um, for the motor. Next thing, all your light sockets and power sockets want to be waterproofed. You can see up there as well the humidity, 63%. You need to try and keep the humidity in the room pretty low. So we use a, a dehumidifier for that. Otherwise, you know, with the water temperature being quite high, you know, you can get um, very high humidity. It's not good for the structure of the building. So I tend to use this unit to bring down the humidity. You can see in the background as well, just on the floor, we've got some um, AstroTurf. It's just a bit kinder on the feet when you're getting in and out of the pool. Um, if you want to heat the pool, uh, heat the room before you use it, I tend to put on this 3 kilowatt heater for 10 or 15 minutes, maybe just heat up the room. Turn it off while you're swimming though, you don't want any water splashing up on that while you're swimming. Um, normally you can have it heat up the room in a short space of time. Yeah, that's what I'm worth doing. And here alongside the pool we've got um, just a wooden construction which have got pivots on there so I can get to all the kit. Now I generally walk over it and use it to just hide all the kit away. But uh, it's really good to uh, you know be able to get access to the, the, you know, the main unit and yeah, so the peak underneath, so I've got my filter unit there, Intex filter, got some of the chemicals uh, lined up. You can see there the heater which is on at the moment, and right at the back we've got a UV system and the five horsepower in this pool's motor right, right at the back there. Going up onto the unit, um, I've got a box full of tricks, pool boys and all kinds of stuff. Now if you're in the pool for any period of time, you don't want to pee in the pool. The pool is small, you don't want to pee in it. So stop peeing a little porta potty, clean it out at the end of it, put some bleach in it, clean it out. You see the hydraulic pipes going to the back of the unit there, paste clock and the cover. Well, the cover's just a homemade one made with a big bit of vinyl and some long poles just to keep it from physically touching the water. Now you can see above there, there was some LED lights. Yeah, so the lights are a bit of a gimmick, but they're very useful if you want to just change the atmosphere. You, know, you can change it to a different colour while you swim, which is, uh, really helps to break the monotony. So now you can see I've rolled the cover back to the pool. You can see the water. Let's have a look around. Got a floating thermometer in here with a remote sensor. See there, it's uh, currently 28 degrees. A fair amount hotter than I'd normally have it. It's very nice, 28 degrees. This room. Let's turn it on. Isolation switch. Use one of the remotes. There we go. There we are, there's a remote amongst all the chemicals and the test kit and all the other stuff. Let's turn it on. Okay. Should have taken the temperature gauge out. Okay, you can see the pace clock's reading. One minute thirty per hundred meters. Going a bit slower now. So it's fully adjustable. Let's go and grab that thermometer. It's a close up of the head unit there. So basically, that's going to pull in the water in the sides and push it out at the rate that you set on the electronic display here. You can see how the cover neatly rolls up as well, just above, so we don't really have to take it off, it just rolls up with those long poles. And then what we need to do is get in and swim. Yeah. 
Let's throw something in there to show how the flow, flow works. Oh. So you can see I've kind of missed the middle of the current, but what should happen, it should return back. There's obviously the water's got to be sucked up the sides to uh, then be pushed out again down the middle. So you get a kind of rip current going right down the middle of the system. So when you're swimming in there, you need to think about you know, staying within the main force of the current, um, not stepping outside on the return part. A more elaborate setup, you'd have the benches which would take the feed coming back into the unit and you don't have to worry about you know, the, uh, the rip current effect. You can have a perfectly nice swim in a pool without the benches. You can see there the wooden structure which I use just to hold the endless pool head in place. So all that remains now is to go for a bit of a swim. Let's uh, have a look at you know how we get in, wind back the uh, wind back the cover. It's quite nice to do it neatly. So you know, take out the ladder. Don't want to swim with that ladder in there. Um, wind the whole thing back. Doesn't take too long. Really nice to get a mechanical one, but you know this is a budget pool. You know this is uh, done for a fraction of the price of a, you know, a professional setup. Um, so here we go. Off we go. It's set to one thirty per one hundred. Now I could be in this pool for hours and hours. It's um, great for um, training. You can set the temperature to whatever you like. I tend to have it pretty cold for you know, open water training. Here I've got the LED lights on going between different colours. Kind of gives you a nice effect when you're in the water. There you go. Change to a lot of different camera angles. You can use, you know, set your camera wherever you want and uh, look at yourself swimming and you know work out where your stroke's going wrong. You know, that's it. Any comments, please, you know, just put them in the comments of the YouTube video and I'll get back to you.